Welcome back, everybody, to the Season 6 Burning Rubber podcast. We'll be once again, we're going to Jonathan Seekins. Hello. And um, we are not going to have Mr. Gangnam style and stuff out. We're going to some of us. It's a very first podcast. It's way right now, and I have no idea why or where, but probably something to do with the army. Um, probably something to do with something very top secret. Anyway, um, so the podcast is going to be between the teams and drivers for the upcoming season. And then at the very end of the video, we will be discussing this weekend's Australian Grand Prix and you know, who our top three predict our top three predictions will be for our own little pickings. All right, so uh, talking about the first team in the championships, and that is going to be the Red Bull team made up of Travis Austin and Jay Jones in F1 and Theo uh, Fall and Harry Westwood in in GP2. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, all round, I think it's a pretty uh, strong team, to be honest. I think Travis is, pro- I think this is probably going to be the, one of the years that Travis challenges for the uh, title, um, or if not there or thereabouts. Um, I think he could probably get his first win uh, this season. And Jay coming up from GP2, um, I think he's trying manual, or he has to do manual gears now. I don't think he did it in, F- in GP2. So it might take him a couple of rounds to get used to that. Uh, but other than that, I think he'll probably cope quite well, uh, especially with a, g- a good, solid teammate like uh, Travis. Um, yeah, I definitely see his team being a great mix of enthusiasm and youth experience at the same time. Um, mainly because, well, most of them are pretty um, pretty experienced now at the race department. I mean, maybe not on the front of um, actually racing, but the amount of involvement they, they all have in the championship is crucial to the race department's success, and it's great to really have them. Be in, um, in a good way or a bad way, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great to have them uh, all together as a team, really. It's kind of, it's kind of be the, um, quite a fun team to keep an eye on, I reckon. Um, now, um, talking about kind of GP2 as well, I reckon Theo is really going to do quite well this year. Um, I think he finished third in the championship last year. No, that was me. With, um, that was me, mate. Come on, get it right. Uh, fourth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fourth. Fourth. We'll call it fourth. Obviously, uh, you're not driving this season. Joe's gone up and uh, Rob, the, uh, his own contender, really. It's going to be going between those two, um, which is going to be a to watch, really. Those have been long-time sparring partners. We can just see how they've been kind of um, progressing at the same rate as each other, such as season five, sorry, season four when they're kind of midfield, season five, they really came of age. And Harry um, kind of became a bit of the Maldonado growth of the last season, but um, he's shown really great pace in pre season to this thing. Um, I've been kind of practicing a little bit um, before, before we really got started, just going around the early, early days of the game. And he seems to be really enjoying the game now, so that's a great thing for them. Yeah, I think um, Harry's probably, this is going to be a, a solid season for Harry. I think he'll be knocking on the doors for points every race. Um, and no doubt Theo will be challenging for the title. Uh, especially after last season, um, he was up there pretty much every race. So this year will probably no doubt be the same. Awesome. And now we'll get into the single car team, the lonely single car team of injured teammates. Um, his teammate thought he had to abandon ship um, about a day ago. <laughs> but I guess when the time this goes live, it'll be two or three days ago. But anyway, Indrex um, currently banned from the forum as well. So it's quite a quiet team. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think Indrex, I haven't seen much of his really. Um, I think he's struggling for games as well. Although um, you can always expect Indrex to give it his utmost. And um, honestly, I reckon if he. I can get to the game quickly. Um, he'll be a strong contender at the start of the season, and everyone's kind of finding their feet. Get to get these street tracks where they're going to need a specific setup, and um, you may actually be finding you're not going to have the best car on the day. And Indrex very good at uh, the man handling it car on the street track. I show him by his previous form um, in previous seasons. Yeah, I think uh, Indrex uh, more than experienced to uh, look after himself. Um... And I'm sure he will adapt quite well, uh, quite quickly to the new game. I think last season he struggled a bit in the first couple of races on the new game as well. But 
uh, give him a race or two and he'll be back where he should be challenging for the podiums and wins hopefully so I mean, he, he does serve at the sharp end you know he does um, he does offer a lot to the league but um, in GP2 now we're going to have uh, Mantas Zielauskas um, of Lithuania and uh, Gigi Beach on the floor Burgess of Great Britain and um, this team I can actually be quite successful this year Mantas was a really a very consistent performer last year offered some good performance here TDB got that out of um, that breakthrough podium in uh, Brazil in the last race and season with uh, peace rates so coming into the, you know, the high is TDB and Mantas even guarantee will score by every single race if nothing goes wrong yeah I think Mantas was my teammate last season and uh, he picked up points every race he raced in and I've, I've given him the goal this year finishing in the top five or top six um, like in the, in the uh, standings which I think he's more than capable of this year uh, just a matter of if he can uh, get used to the game quickly enough and challenge uh, up near the front and as for TGB uh, he's looking pretty solid this year actually uh, I've had a few practice sessions with him and he's been challenging with quite a lot of other guys who were in front of him last season. Uh, so I think he's a promising year for both of these guys and it could be a good team performance. Yeah, I really do think that these guys can probably even challenge for a top three in the constructors as well because um, I, I, can, I can see it, this team being particularly useful like, communicating well with each other. Yeah. Anyway, Mercedes now and the F1 team is going to be of our current champion, Daniel Hull. And his teammate, which he has pitched this season in Patrick uh, Ulrich. And that very, very plentiful middle team in the Merck. Um, Jared the Merck did a fair bit in, in um, trying to test the equal cars. And I preferred the Merck uh, as the best handling car, although the, 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 uh, the lap time didn't translate. But I found it was definitely the easiest car for me to drive. Uh, um, I said that I got quite didn't drive as anyone else. But it's not about me. Um, this team is definitely pretty quick, if not dominate the, the constructors to be honest with you um, no other team really matches it made up from the Marusha team of Musa and uh, Joe but Dan it's probably going to be you know definitely well, if not already got one hand on it already to be honest with you with um, me and uh, Musa having our own difficulties in the start of the season and uh, Patrick breaking GP2 that can't you um John. Yeah, uh, Patrick's got a few special special tracks that he's pretty good at, like Monza where he won, uh, it's, uh, India where he was winning before he disconnected, um, and I think that's just to name a few tracks that he's pretty decent at. Um, and I think, yeah, Patrick will be challenging for the points most races, and Dan just goes without saying that he'll be challenging for wins in the championship. Absolutely. And now we're on to the, the unknown GP2 team in uh, Stephen Bolt and Paul Armstrong. Although Stephen Bolt did do a few cameos at the end of season five and has shown some very, very strong pace. Um, haven't seen too much improvement in testing, Alan said that, but I reckon um, on the form of last season, he could probably get to top five, if not even more. Yeah, I think at the start of the season, Stephen will be challenging for podiums and top fives, as you say. Um, especially going on last year's performance. But then again, just like the stories with everyone, it's a matter of how quickly they can adapt uh, to the new game. As for Paul, I've uh, raced him a few times. Pretty decent driver as well. He'll be challenging for points every race. And again, probably top fives. Uh, so I think all round, this is a pretty strong GP2 team, actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, we kind of pushed Paul uh, from the Apex Racing League. And we... Um, uh, I'm really impressed with how he's kind of stayed so committed with um, everything. You know, I didn't really expect him to kind of really stay around the race time for too long, mainly because um, he, he kind of went quite a little bit. But Paul, I reckon he's got a lot of potential in him. I know um, him and Harry from the Marussia team are the only great um, competitors this season in GP2, but we'll get onto them later in the video when we go onto the Marussia team. But now we're going to move on to the our team of Andrew Holmes and Adam Morris, and this is going to be, I want to say, the tightest battle in the team out of any team we've got this year. 
Yeah. Patrick Mahomes really ramped up a lot last year, picked up a couple of podiums um, towards the end, and really put his foot down for well, put down some foundations for this season. And Adam Morris, we know he's a very, very quick driver, maybe a bit inconsistent. We saw that um, season with a couple of DNFs and not really kind of getting the most out of it. We know that he's disappointed with the season. But we know that these two are definitely great sparring partners. Um, Andrew Holmes, both, and, and Adam Morris, that matter, both in top five contenders. Yeah, I, I would uh, agree with you there. Um, Adam, uh, pretty quick when it comes to overall race pace. I'm not sure about his qualifying pace as much, but um, he... Well, actually, I'm just con- contradicting you there, aren't I? <laughs> um, yeah, but Adam's a quick guy. Andrew's a quick guy. Um, I don't really I know too much about either driver. I mean, I've done a season with Adam in, S- in Season 2 and a season with Andrew in Season 3. Um, but then again, they were, probably, they were both in front of me at that point, so <laughs> I don't really know how clean a driver they are, but a solid team nonetheless. Yeah, we're now going to move on to... Um the two teams being made up of Aaron Wilkins, who I think was P8 of the traffic last year, and the new rookie signing of Sam Musqua. Musqua. I don't know that's the actual last name, sorry, Sam. Um, but Aaron's definitely going to be more invigorated throughout the season. He's not going to be disappointed with the outcome of season five, but um, although I don't expect him to get too strong in the game early on, he's got a couple of commitments, but I know he definitely be upping the ante towards middle of the season. That's where Aaron's typically strong. And though Sam is going to be our youngest ever race part member, um, I'm not going to deal with his age, but he is a, a very enthusiastic member. I've seen him racing very quick as well. Um, obviously, I don't know how good he is consistency-wise, but I can guarantee you they're both going to be um, fighting for at least midfield um, for most of the season. Yeah, um, I've seen a bit of Aaron in pre-season, and he seems pretty wired up on this one. Um, so I, I'd be expecting him challenging for podiums most races. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually gets a win finally this year. Um, but then again, he came pretty close in season four uh, a few times. So maybe he's good on the first se- first season on the game and second season he's not so good. But I don't know anything about Sam. So uh, based on Aaron, I would go for this as a pretty sound team. All right. And now moving on to towards India. And this is going to be the team made up of Flago, Murado, and Dean Reagan. And um, this is going to be a bit of an unknown team, I think, personally. Uh, I mean, we know Flavio is going to be a very consistent scorer. Maybe he acts that kind of crucial few attempts there. Um, although I do expect him to get be a couple of top fives. You never know. He was quick on 2011, and this is going to be like 2011. And Dean Reagan, we know he had brilliant one lap pace. I mean, he took so many poles and led so many first laps in F1 2012, but didn't really string together a proper campaign. Or for that, even, for, even for that match, a couple of strong laps in the race. You know, he's not too great on race, on race distance, but Dean is a very quick driver over one lap. We know that. So I do expect him to do quite well this year. Again, it's a bit easier to handle. Yeah, uh, Flavio uh, been in F1 since, I think, season one, hasn't he? So he's obviously yeah, he's very experienced. One. Yeah, very experienced. Um, knows how to handle himself in the car. Um, Dean was my teammate in season two, and pretty close last season with, uh, in terms of pace uh, with Dean. And as you said, his qualifying pace is amazing. You can't really match him on that. Mm. He got a few poles in uh, F one two seasons ago. Um, but I think these guys will both be challenging for points pretty regularly. So I don't think they need to worry too much about that. Good stuff. And now moving on to another single one-man team, and that is going to be Lance Loomis. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't know much. I've never really raced against him, um, although I know that Lance is probably going to be fighting for midfield, if not more. Um, yeah. I've seen him race, and he does seem to have quite good pace in this game, to be honest with you. I've got to say, Lance is very good at staying out of trouble. <laughs> um, so, uh, if he if he's just good in this game as he is in last season, which I don't see how why he couldn't be, 
Um, and his pace probably has picked up a bit. I haven't really practiced with him too much on this game. Um, but I think he will be challenging for mid, like midfield. Um, yeah, I think it'll be midfield challenging for top five. Yeah, I couldn't read more about the um, idea of him staying out of trouble, but particularly on this new grid, we're going to have a set, couple more rookies than usual compared to season uh, five, where basically got this regurgitation of the same field that came across really disgustingly. But um, he, there's a lot of rookies around in there, could potentially make a lot of mistakes. Let him take a level head to uh, keep calm in that situation. So I imagine Lance will do pretty well from where he is, and I, I reckon he could definitely um, make good performances this year. Yeah. Right, so we move on to the uh, Toro Rosso team of Oli uh, and Mark in F1. And I uh, can't remember who's in GP2. Oh, it's Rob and Jot um, in GP2. But for Oli and Mark in F1, Oli, uh, you're not really too fast to this car, are you? I don't think. No, Toro Rosso is stable, although maybe not too much to my liking. Um, oh, it, could have, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, we could have drawn um, the Loach or the Marusha, which are actually dogs of a car, as we all know. Just <laughs> joking. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sound of my car. I think I've made progress where I want to make it with it, to be honest with you. I could be happy with my teammate and Mark Franklin. Um, he is, I think, the most experienced driver on the grid, having ever only ever missed one race in like, the last three years, which is an incredible achievement. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I reckon he's going to be constantly bagging those top 10s. I mean, he's never drunk it, but that was in 2011. He's lost it in 2012, though. So I see no reason why me and Mark can't really be challenging for top three constructors, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, I, f I agree. Uh, Mark's obviously very experienced, and as I've said, for a couple of other drivers, knows how to look after himself in the car. Um, I think Ollie's going to be challenging for top three in the championship, if not the championship. And Mark will be midfield. <laughs> No, I'm not a fan of the championship. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to the third driver of the Cantalentry Championship in Rob uh, Hewan and Kellis. And Rob is going to definitely be the favourite for this year's championship. Yeah. Bags of experience, incredible pace, and a driver who we know has got a lot of fire and is definitely having um, a bit hard done by, by the result of last year. Very felt that he only got it because of the amount of races he turned up to. When in fact, even the days when they were all there, he was definitely one of the outright quickest guys there. Yeah. So he ran from Rob to definitely be a very strong force of contention to deal with in the early races. Yeah, I think career last season was a prime example of his pace, just lights to flag uh, victory. And I think that was a pretty full grid that day as well. So it just proves how quick Rob can be. Um, and Come second in the championship is you, you don't do that just by turning up to races. You have to still perform each week, um, and yeah, I think outright favourite for the title this year or season. Yeah, his team, his teammate George Ellis. Um, I haven't seen too much of him on the in Trinity. He's been a bit quiet. So it's hard to gauge where he's going to be standing. But it was um, a solid midfield contender last year, and um, uh, honestly, I don't want to make any predictions based on what I haven't seen. I honestly do expect him to act as a great wingman for Rob and potentially get a lot of top fives. Yeah, I think Jort probably is on for his first podium this season. Came up short a couple of times uh, in his first two seasons, but I think this year, uh, this season, will be pretty solid for Jort. Mm -hmm. Now moving on to the final team, and that is the late arrival of the Marussia team, um, only having packed their bags just then, books and easy jet budget airlines over to Australia. <laughs> that is how cheap Marussia are. But they have the very fast pairing in Musa Wada and uh, Joe Lanka in what is going to be the most um, competitive team in Quagway, I want to say. Like, Musa was, um, I think he won the Quagway Award, I can't remember, but he definitely took quite pole positions per race last season. And uh, Joe was pretty much swept up the awards um, for GP2 on every level. So as GP2, I expect Joe to really be very, very quick this year. We're going to be struggling a couple of the early races like I did last season with 100% fuel. We can expect both of them to be right on the pace what is the quickest car by a mile an hour in a straight line. 
<laughs> by a mile an hour. Uh, yeah, I think um, this will be the team for the F1 constructors. Um, Musa, no doubt, will be challenging for a top three uh, in the or championship. Title. Yeah, or the title. And title. Joe, uh, GP2 champion last season, he'll no doubt be in the top... Well, I, I, I think he could get a top five. Good stuff. And um, final pairing of drivers, that is going to be Harry Sarkowski and Mark Jackson. And um, Mark, we, Harry is another driver who is going to be very, very quick and a strong contender for a lot of, of fire I race against him um, in another league and he's a particularly consistent driver. He also made a load of progress as well from what I've seen. I mean, Harry's a very quick learner, someone who can definitely get together a very strong championship and knows how to be a champion, not trying to contend but string together a long series of results, not just go for those one-off wins and then fall back in the pack. Yeah, um, I think... Impaired, Sorry, go on. Impaired with Mark Jackson, very strong contention, um, definitely top three constructors, maybe. Um, Mark, I haven't seen much of him, to be honest with you. He took um, a sabbatical out in season five, did like one race as a reserve, um, and pulled out of Canada in season four. So he hasn't really raced full time season three. That's a long time ago. So I can't really gauge my performance. I do know that Mark does appear to have um, a lot of in, a lot of intention in uh, how he's going to be driving this year. He's having driven alongside him in practice. Um, he seems to know um, he knows and stuff and knows he has a point to prove. Yeah, I think um, Harry definitely puts in the hours, and he's probably probably duly rewarded with that. Um, I think by the end of the season, he will definitely be challenging for wins, if not podiums. And for Mark, um, I think he'll be in the challenging for a midfield top five, maybe. Um, he's got a bit of experience under his uh, arms. Uh, and, yeah, I think that's a pretty solid team. Yeah, no, just one word on reserve, Irving Craig Richard. Um, unfortunately, he has to drop out of the first couple of races, but, yeah, he's... So he's still up for racing the West, so he's been in reserve for him. Hopefully he'll be taking a full tight seat um, in the Force India alongside Dance soon. Anyway, now on to our Australian Grand Prix preview. And this uh, 3.3 mile track, I think it is, this 16 corners, is definitely one of the most challenging tracks on the calendar in terms of momentum and getting the lines right. Surely just from the fact of how demanding it is in the course and the style of corners as well. They're not just simple corners. These are very fast chicanes mixing with a lot of slow, slippery off camber corners. Yeah, um, I quite like this track to be honest. Um, it's got you have to have a nice rhythm to get a good lap time. Uh, so it can often take more than one lap to get the uh, perfect lap uh, qualifying lap. Uh, but then again, this year or this with this game, you've got tyre wear to think about more than last season. Uh, so that could play a major part in. Uh, what's going to happen uh, and definitely strategies would vary quite a lot in both F1 and GP2 mm -hmm. so having a look at the track guide here I can tell you that it's going to be particularly difficult on the, on the turn 3 and 4 section traction paramount in this particularly just because of the lack of traction you have in 2013 now but with the final corner turn 16 you're constantly accelerating through that corner from the penultimate corner turn 15 and you're going to be picking a lot of revs into there and uh, not a lot of speed. You're going to be not getting that touch off the ground. You're going to be really spinning those rear tyres a lot. And potentially even getting mugged down in turn one just because of the exit you're going to get. A lot of over, a lot of oversteer and, over, and uh, correction as well. Yep, so predictions. F1, go. Go. Um, Dan Hall, Travis, Musa. <sighs> and then G2. Now, yeah, um, Rob, Theo, Aaron. I, 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 would, I wouldn't disagree with either of them. Um, oh, I, I, tell I, Chris isn't racing this weekend, he's at his grandparents. Oh. I'm, gonna put, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put Dan in first, Musa second, and Joe third. And who? Joe. Oh, okay. Um, I, I would. Hang on. Yeah, I, I think the F1 top three is pretty sound. Uh, maybe not Joe in his first race. Uh, I would be more inclined to go for maybe Adam. 
um, just yeah, I'm, or you, Oli, obviously. But seeing as you're not p tipping yourself for uh, anything, maybe Andrew as well, Andrew Holmes. I think yeah, the team of Andrew, Ad, uh, Adam and Andrew will be pretty close. Uh, but for GP two, Rob, Theo, they'll be challenging each other and pushing each other all the way. Um, third place, that's a tough one. Uh, maybe one of the new guys will pop up with a special performance. I uh, don't know many of the new guys, so maybe one of them will be super quick. Um, but P3, I will go for Aaron and maybe an outside bet of TGB. Ooh, that's, that's a risky one. <laughs> Yeah, I, right, thought I'd, so I'll just put my neck out for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so we're coming towards the end of today's podcast. If you've enjoyed it, it's been great fun. Uh, and check the new today with our thoughts and general banter on the World of Race Department. We hope to come back with you soon with our preview of Malaysia, but also our preview of the Australian in Grand Prix. Hopefully, hopefully alongside Aaron, because there may be one other um, if we can get someone else in. So it's a uh, goodbye from John. And goodbye from Ollie. Bye.